Working with the radial masking bug gives you a lot of very unique results and can be very helpful in odd situations like this one where you have a circular object that you'd like to edit. You can take a photo like this image here and you can turn it into one like this by adding a little bit of warmth and detail to the coffee and a little bit of coolness and glow to the outside of the image, we can separate these two components just by using a very, very simple technique. Let me jump into Perfect Effects and show you how easy it is to do this. I have my image open here inside Perfect Effects and on the right hand side of my screen is something called the filter stack. Down at the bottom, on the right hand corner, is a small icon that looks like a gradient with a plus and minus sign next to it. This is the tool that we're going to use. It's called the Adjustable Gradient, and we're going to add a very simple change to the coffee cup and to the outside of the coffee cup separately. Let's start out by clicking on that icon to add an Adjustable Gradient. It applies an automatic gradient-based masking bug, and what it's done is it's separated the photo into two parts. It's adding an adjustment to the top half of the image, and removing that adjustment from the bottom half of the image. We need to change the shape of the masking bug to work so that we can make an adjustment to the coffee. Up in the tool options bar, you'll see there's a shape drop-down menu, and we're gonna open this up, and there are two options right up at the top, center and edges. Both of these work with a radial-based masking bug. Center will make an adjustment to the outside of a circular bug, leaving the center intact, and edges will make an adjustment to the center of your masking bug and leave the edges completely alone. So we're going to start out by choosing edges. When I hover my mouse over my image, you'll see the outline of the masking bug, and there are four little dots on the top, bottom, left, and right that give you the ability to resize it. If I click on one of the dots and get a small hand, that means I can adjust whether I'd like it to be more of an oval, more of a circle, or back into an oval again. When I get it into a pretty perfect circle there, if I hover my mouse just along the edge of the straight line, I'll get a two-sided arrow. This gives me the ability to shrink the entire bug smaller or larger. I've got it about the right size, so let's go ahead and click on the dot on the inside of the radial masking bug to move it into place. What's great is if it's not perfect the first time around, I can center it right here, and then we could just make it a little bit bigger so that it covers most of the coffee inside the cup. The dotted line on the outside indicates the feathering amount around the edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and leave that about where it is. We want a nice soft feather so that the transition of the adjustments we make is not too harsh. On the right hand side of the screen in the filter options pane, we can make adjustments to the cup of coffee. Right now it's set to a preset called lighten, which means it's lightening that part of our image. We can also make other adjustments, including color. I wanna warm this up a little bit because I think the coffee looks a little too cool, especially because the light from the outside of the cup, that blue, is reflecting on the coffee. So let's take the warm slider and move that over to the right. Let's also take the Vibrant slider and move that over to the right as well. I want to add a little bit of detail to all of those bubbles, so I'll take the Detail slider and move that over to the right. Adds a little bit of crispness to the edges. I'm also going to take the Compression slider and move that over to the right as well. That's going to save some of the shadows that are a little too dark on the right-hand side and darken a couple of the highlights so they're not quite so bright. We can also go through and add a little bit of contrast here. Not too much, but just enough so that we still get some good blacks and some good whites. Now let's do the exact same thing we did, but to the outside of the coffee. We'll go back up to our filter stack and click on that same adjustable gradient layer like we did before. What's great is when I do that, it automatically applies another second adjustable gradient layer. We'll go back up to our shape drop-down menu, and this time we're going to choose center. We're gonna go through the same thing that we did before. Let's make this into a little bit more of a circle. Let's shrink it down so that it'll fit over the coffee, place it right about there, and then size it right towards the edge. 
Now back on the right hand side in the filter options pane, I can make other changes that will only affect the table and the edge of the cup. I'm going to leave the brightness all the way up at 70 because we definitely need to lighten it. I'm also going to take the compression slider and move that over to the right. Maybe push the brightness even more. I'm also going to go down and I'm going to adjust the color. However, this time I want to cool down the outside. So we'll take the warmth slider and move that over to the left. Maybe a couple more points. I'm going to take the vibrant slider and also move that to the left. I want to make sure that there isn't too much color around the outside. And then I'm also going to add a soft glow. I'm going to open up the type drop down menu and there are quite a few different types of glows. One of my favorite is called soft light. So I'll go ahead and choose that option and then move the amount slider over a couple of points. The glow isn't going to be too intense, but it's going to add a little bit of brightness and excitement to some of the highlights around the outside. Once we're done, we can scroll back up to the filter stack and let's take a look at our before and after. Our original image has an area right over the cup where the coffee bubbles are that's much too dark, not warm enough for my taste, and definitely a little too contrasted, so I'm losing some of the detail. The outside is a much too warm and definitely not bright enough or soft enough. Just with these two adjustable gradient layers and our awesome masking bug, we turned our image into this. What's even better about using these inside perfect effects is now that I've made the two components of my image and adjusted them separately, I could also add another effect that applies to the image universally. You can make your changes to your photo here, and once you're done, just click on Save and Close.